Internal protection sanction reigns with you in the of one God forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet. He grew up in front of us, like a root in arid ground. Without beauty, without majesty, we saw him. No looks to eyes. And familiar. And we took no account. My God and brought low. Punishment that brings us each taking He never opened. Like a sheep that for its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law, he was taken. Would anyone plead his cause? Yet he was torn away from the land of the living. For our faults, he struck down in death. There'd been no perjury. He shall see his He shall see the with us. Though he of 
grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace of help. that his prayer was he became for But God raised of Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, are looking for me, then let them go. The words he had spoken would be Then Simon the high priest said right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who would advise the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. And because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood round a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. 
One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a cock began to crow. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now, it was early morning. And to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? Oh, if he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him! Give us Barabbas! Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he die because he claimed to be the Son of God. And he went back inside Jesus. But Jesus gave Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. And when Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, Take him away! Take him away! 
crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. 
Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 35 kilograms. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. And then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. Dear friends, the Passion reading is one of the most gripping scenes of the Gospels of Holy Week. From the cross, Christ says to his mother, Woman, behold your son. To the disciple, he says, Behold your mother. And this is the exact moment in history that Mary becomes for all Christians our mother and Our Lady. In French, Our Lady is Notre Dame. Last year, the whole world was gripped by the sad events in Paris. An electrical fault sparked a massive fire which destroyed much of the roof of the 800 year old, most famous Gothic cathedral. One image for me was the image of a cross like shape seen in Notre Dame taken from the air to speak of hope in testing times. Amidst the stunning and shocking images of Notre Dame engulfed by fire, but those taken by the drone above the cathedral, that blazing cross in the Paris skyline. These overhead photos of the cathedral in Paris were reminiscent of the burning cross. The blaze and the images of a cross-like shape burning reminded many Christians of the actual sacrifice Jesus made. Good Friday brings us before the cross of Jesus from which so many churches take their shape. And indeed here last Friday, the whole of this church was lit in over 1,000 candles, many in the shape of the cross which were placed on our benches. The cross we carry on Good Friday 2020 will go down in history The cross upon which Jesus died is love of God for humanity that has turned him. Yet it was the image, the first image taken inside the cathedral last year, once it was declared safe, which I believe resonated and spoke louder than any written word or commentator or indeed any priest could properly describe. Amidst the dirt, the dust, the debris, and the unimaginable smell of burning, the one thing that caught our eyes was the bronze cross shining brightly amidst the rubble. Pictures of the holy symbol in the cathedral's nave showed it bathed in light, giving the impression the cross is emitting a warm glow. Look it up, Google it, see that image for yourself this day, because this, if anything, the destruction of our own crosses is the cross in the midst of the Notre Dame the that's that is But still the cross is never easy. It comes in all shapes and sizes in our own lives. And this very conscious of many families who are grieving in these days of quarantine with only 10 people in attendance at funerals. Desperately sad days for them all. Good Friday is a day we celebrate and feel the power of the cross in our daily lives and in our world. For many, the cross is a symbol we wear around our necks, we place in our rooms, 
today if you are watching at home and I know everyone seems to be trying to tune in at the same time and the system may have crashed today if you're having problem logging in that's what it is but I hopefully you're joining us on Facebook or watching us on catch up but get the cross in your house and get ready to venerate it as we're about to venerate here the cross here we put the cross on the top of our buildings here in Clomel, the Holy Year cross shines down on us day and night. People can tell Christianity or a Christian building because of the cross. We come to the cross this afternoon. We come and venerate the replica of the cross on which Jesus died. The cross here on the sanctuary, when it is unveiled, will remain here on the sanctuary in the days ahead, reminding us that for however long we are in virtual lockdown, and restricted in our movements, this cross, which we all endure, is a symbol that we, the people in Clomel and from around the world, we carry this cross together. And Christ is with us at every step of that long and uncomfortable journey, however long that may be. We come and ask Jesus to help us love as he loved, to love in a way that puts others before ourselves. We come to the cross this afternoon and we give Jesus our sins, our pains, our sorrows. We offer prayers for our family and our friends and those we worry about. Many here and around the world have lost loved ones to the virus and to other natural causes. Many have loved ones with serious illnesses, particularly with the coronavirus, physical and psychological ailments. Many here are themselves sick. How am I going to make it through these difficulties? Many of you are asking. Many are homeless, needing food banks, and rely on the goodness of people to give them meals daily. Another sad reflection of Ireland in which we live in, in the year 2020. Many addictions and our health service overstretched. Again, the list seems almost endless. Today we come to the cross. Give your problems and challenges to the Lord and know that no matter what happens, once everything is placed in the hands of the one who died for us, every challenge, every difficulty that life throws at us becomes a prayer united to the prayers of our crucified Saviour. Come to the cross. Unite the challenges of your lives to the cross and know that the one who loved you, who loved us to the death, will also love us to life. Without the cross of Good Friday and the crosses of our daily lives, we can never experience the glory of the resurrection. Come on then. Let us pick up and carry our cross. Let us have the strength to help carry the crosses of those who are bereaved, sick, or on the frontline services. We can beat this virus together by staying at home. Let the symbol of the resilience of the cross in Notre Dame from last year's scene remind us all that no matter what our challenges, let Christ's cross and love shine brightly, no matter what destruction and pain is all around us today. We now have the solemn intercessions and this year there is an extra intercession which is added at the end during this current pandemic. Let us pray dearly beloved for the Holy Church of God that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and unite her throughout the whole world and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, 
Watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him, the Christian people governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Alphonsus, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us also pray for catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those who one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first. That he may grant them to advance in love of his name and faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in Christ. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ that enlightened by the Holy Spirit they too may enter on the way of salvation. O 
Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you, and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart, and the rights of peoples. Look with favour, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace and freedom of religion, may through your gift be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God, the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travellers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you that all may rejoice because in their hour of need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And this additional prayer is especially composed and written and authorized to be said at this time at this day. For those who suffer because of the current pandemic. Almighty ever living God, protect those who are suffering, relieve the pain of those who are sick, give strength to those who are taking care of them, and welcome the dead into eternal peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the next part of the adoration of the Holy Cross, just to invite everybody at home, if you do have a small cross or crucifix, to have this ready. In a moment, we will unveil the cross, which will remain here in the sanctuary behind the priest's chair after today, uh, throughout the coronavirus. And as I kiss the cross myself alone, I do so on behalf of all the people watching and the entire people here in Clonmel and the parishioners and those who are watching us from wherever you are. Just to also let you know that this evening at 7.30 there will be stations of the cross here. Tomorrow there will be uh, morning prayer at 10, the rosary at 12 and divine uh, mercy chaplets at the earlier time of 12.20. And also tomorrow evening the Easter vigil begins at 9pm.
This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Saviour of the world. Come, let us worship. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Saviour of the world. Come, let us worship. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Saviour of the world. Come, let us worship.
at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May the receiving of your body, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me a protection, mind and body and healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And for those of you not physically here with me this day, we now make a spiritual Holy Communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honoured the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.